Good morning. Good morning, everyone. My cabinet colleague and someone I have a tremendous amount of respect and time for, the Honorable Shamfa Kujo, Minister of Sport and Community Development, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Ms. Randy Davis, United Nations Development Program Resident Representative, Trinidad and Tobago, Curacao, Aruba, and St. Martin, Dr. Kiendai Bolaji, good to see you again, sir. United Nations Peace and Development Advisor for the Caribbean. Well, my friend, I, I have to say good morning as well. I see Justice Lisa Ramsumir Hines on. Good morning, madam. Miss, Mrs. Angela Edwards, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Sport and Community Development. Mrs. Beverly Reed Samuel, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Sport and Community Development. Mrs. Beverly Harry Emanuel, Exec Executive Director, Community Communi Community Mediation Services Division, Ministry of Sport and Community Development, representatives from CARICOM and other regional bodies, other heads of department, senior government officials, members of the Mediation Board of Trinidad and Tobago, representatives of the University of the West Indies and Hugh Wooding Law School, representatives of local and regional faith-based, community-based and non-governmental organizations, Mediation consultants, cit citizen mediators, staff of the Ministry of Sport and Community Development, specially invited guests, members of the media. I think I've eaten up about five minutes of my time there with the protocols. Good morning, everyone. We, we are in a very different time, in an era of history right now, as we participate and as we kick off this very important symposium this morning. We are in the middle of a global pandemic, that is COVID-19. So my hats off and my kudos to all who have made this morning possible, because in a difficult time, we're called to the occasion to rise in different ways. And I'm really, really impressed that you all were able to pull this off. My colleague, Minister Kujo, called me just as I was rushing in here. I think she's having some technical difficulties in, in Tobago to get on. She will join us as soon as she can if she's not already on, and I apologize on her behalf as she asked me to just notify you all. I'd like to thank you all very much for the opportunity to participate in this very important symposium here this morning and to just bring some brief remarks at the beginning of the Community Inclusive Mediation Symposium. I've been advised that today's symposium remains part of the wider Community Inclusive Mediation Project, which was launched in March of this year. Of course, we started dealing frontally with COVID on March 12th of this year, when we had our first positive case. And that this is a collaboration between the Community Mission Services Division of the Ministry of Sport and Community Development and the United Nations Development Programme, Department of Political Peacebuilding Affairs, UNDP and DPPA. I'm encouraged to know that taking part in today's symposium and the wider initiative are members of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Our police officers serve on the front line in enforcing and maintaining law and order, whilst also working in partnership with the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. Mediation is a very, very useful tool and concept. I was thinking about it this morning on my way here, and I practiced as a advocate attorney in the courts, a litigation attorney for many years of life before entering this strange world of politics. And I can tell you all that when the courts began moving towards ADR, it made a tremendous difference, right? Alternate, alternative dispute resolution. So I have first-hand experience and participated in many mediations. And it jumped out at me and I wanted to share some thoughts with you all this morning. Very often persons in conflict, and I'll switch it across to the national security perspective after just addressing the principle and policy as I see it. Very often persons who are in conflict really just want their side of the story to be told. They want the other side who they're in conflict with to understand where they're coming from and vice versa. It can very, very quickly escalate. So in my former life, I participated in in when it had reached a court scenario or just before going to court, where persons were in conflict, whether it be what over whatever, and how they saw the world was the most important thing to them. And they were to be provided with a forum where they felt safe to express their view 
to a third party who was independent and a third party who would listen to both sides and both sides would listen to each other. And that third party may be able to identify the areas where they would be able to be a resolution of the conflict. But I think an important concept is that people just want to be heard. They want their voice to be heard and their perspective to be heard. This program, I wish it all of the best of luck. And I'd like to say at the outset, you have the full support of the Ministry of National Security because we recognize firsthand how successful community inclusive mediation can work, just as Randy said, to avoid violent conflict or conflict resorting to violence. Let me put it that way. We have a program that we've launched and again, COVID came and sort of put us in a, not a dampened position, but we haven't been able to, to get it out there publicly as yet. It's a very important program that we're doing here at the Ministry of National Security. And I'm gonna direct them this morning, a secure violence program that they're to make contact with the Community Inclusive Mediation Project and see how we can marry with each other and what synergies there may be. Because if we can get this done successfully, the Community Inclusive Mediation Project across Trinidad, and I was happy as I was flipping through the virtual screens, seeing the different areas in Trinidad that are participating here this morning, we can avoid a lot of what I spent a greater part of my day yesterday in security briefings, looking at what has been taking place over the year and planning for the rest of the year, and looking at things like wounding and shootings and and violent crimes being committed. This initiative, please do not underestimate the value that this can bring if we spread the concepts wide and far and we train enough community mediators, including some of our frontline police officers and in particular our municipal police. Our vision is the municipal police will become the community-based policing in our, our various communities throughout Trinidad and Tobago. And that what they should be on is on the ground and understanding the various persons in the communities, etc. And if this project is implemented to the fullest of its potential, it will have a positive effect in the reduction of crime and violent crime. Another area I'd like you all to give consideration to that bothers me at a personal level is the explosion or the continuation of domestic violence in our society. And also COVID has, has added to those flames of domestic violence and the whole concept of domestic violence as people are forced into spaces, into their small spaces and how they react to each other. Again, a community inclusive mediation project should con consider, and I'm sure you're all already doing it, and I support it reaching out in the communities for that sector as well. Those who are the victims of, of domestic violence, because very often the perpetrators, they may need help and a mediation project can offer some level of help. And also the victims, they need to be heard and you may be able to seek and assist in those areas. So I'd like to give my full endorsement whatever it is worth. I've always believed in ADR and mediation is a very important concept and principle and policy of ADR. I'd like to thank all of you who have put it together. My colleague, Minister Kujo and her ministry, which is a new ministry as of August of this year, which is sport and community development. Don't underestimate the value of the combination of those two. Please continue doing the great work you're doing with your community mediation division services. If there's any assistance that we can give at national security, please reach out to us who have our full support. To the UN, who continue to be an important, important partner and ally of Trinidad and Tobago. Once again, we appreciate your assistance, your effort, your energy, and the experience that you bring to bear. I mean, the whole body of the UN one of the greatest pillars is the conflict resolution going across the world and assisting sovereign nations to avoid violent conflict. And when there's violent conflict, to get involved and see how it could be diffused, etc. This is a very important program and it shouldn't fall under the radar 
It has the full support of the government of Trinidad and Tobago. And to all of you who are participating, I was happy to see the judiciary involved and to see some of the names. There's too many screens to flip through to really get a proper idea of who's participating here this morning. But it seems to be a very broad spectrum. And if as um, Randy said, it's over 110 participants. Hopefully that's grown since. Good luck. Good luck because this is something that can't fail or shouldn't be allowed to fail because it is going to play a very important part in the continu continuation of how we avoid violent conflict in Trinidad and Tobago. And I wish you all all of the success that this program deserves. And Godspeed. And just know that it has a full endorsement of the government of Trinidad and Tobago. And on behalf of my <clears throat> colleague, Minister Kujo and myself, please know that you have our full support as well. I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to have you shared a few brief remarks, which are really my personal thoughts on how this program can work into the fabric of our society to make Trinidad and Tobago a safer, more secure and a better place at the end of the day. Thank you all very much for the opportunity this morning.